Welcome, Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. It's good to see so many familiar faces and some faces that are new to our yoga studio. Um, my name is Zach Lasker and I have the honor of being the executive director of the Open Temple and also our resident yoga instructor. So just a couple of notes before we dive in and get started. Today, you'll certainly want access to a yoga mat or a towel, a space on which to practice. So please unfold that. And then in terms of props that will serve you well throughout the practice, number one, if you have access to a yoga belt or a strap or a long piece of rope, or even if it's the type of belt that you put around your pants or a skirt, now would be a good time to get your belt or strap out. And then secondly, um, if you have access to blocks or thick hardcover books, these will also serve you well over the course of our practice today. Okay, we are gonna get, a, a, get started. Shabbat Shalom again. And good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. It's such a pleasure to see so many faces in our virtual yoga studio. And I wanna set the stage before we um, start in with our physical practice. Here we are landed in 2021. It's the start of a new secular year. And I think that many of us um, are really hoping and looking forward to a reboot, a reboot in physical health, a reboot in social wellness and how we connect with people who we already know and love. And I hope that we are also looking for a reboot with others in our lives who we already know, or maybe we have yet to meet, who we don't have much in common with. And how do we relate to them? And certainly a reboot in spiritual wellness would be welcome. I can only speak on my own behalf. And I think one way to approach the new year, because this idea of a reboot can be so large and so overwhelming, is to really focus in on what is in my lane. What is it that I have control over? What is it that I can generate from within and extend outwards. I think that really helps to make change more accessible. And there is an idea in Judaism that change can really emanate from within. And what I want us to do over the next couple of months in these yoga sessions is to look at a practice within Judaism that is so related to the practice of yoga called Musar. Musar is an idea within Judaism that seeks to unlock the spark of holiness within each one of us so that we can, like I said before, extend it out into the world. And a nice way to think about Musar, quite simply stated, is that it's a way for us to tap into our inner mensch tap into human decency, just boil it down to what is essential human decency. And in his book, one of the great current scholars of Musar tradition, Alan Morinus, um, unpacks several different attributes of human decency. And the first one, which is the one that we're going to focus on today, is humility. So I'd like for that to be the overarching idea of our practice today. Please come and sit in Sukhasana in a seated fold with one shin stacked in front of the other. And if already you feel some compression in your lower back, now is a good time to take out one of your blocks or your book and prop yourself up on it. That will create more space and take some of the tension out of your lower back. So however you decided to position yourself, lengthen up through all four sides of your torso. Have the crown of your head extend up towards the room. Take your arms out, fingertips on the ground. Turn your palms open and inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Arms frame your ears and exhale, arms come down. 
palms out. Inhale, arms lift up towards the ceiling. Pause. And exhale, arms come back down. Going to do this a few times, just bringing action to our body, palms face out, inhale, arms up. When you reach the top of your breath, you should also reach your arms up towards the ceiling, hold in the breath, and then exhale, arms out and down. Let's do it two more times, focusing on the breath. Inhale, and exhale. And inhale, and exhale. Building on, inhale, lift your arms up. I'm gonna start to open up our shoulders. As you exhale, lower your right forearm and hand to your upper back. Then release your left arm so that it's parallel with the ground. Bend your left elbow, loop your left arm in back of you and either interlace your fingers so that you pull in opposite directions, or this could be a great time to get out your strap, to do this with a strap, in which case your left hand is gonna pull the strap down and your right hand is gonna pull the strap up towards the ceiling. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, drawing your right elbow in towards your head. And as you exhale, release your hands, either release the clasp or release the strap, arms out in a T position and then exhale, arms come down. If you're practicing with the strap, move the strap over to your left shoulder so that it's there and waiting for you. And now inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend your left elbow and forearms reaching down to your upper back, lower your right arm so that it's parallel to the ground, bend your right elbow and swing your right arm back around and either interlace your fingers and pull in opposite directions or grab onto the strap. With your left hand pulling up, your right hand pulling down, you might notice that that left elbow might flop open. So bring it in towards your head and three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And one more inhale and exhale, release, arms back out into a T position and then exhale, arms come down. You can remove the strap, keep it handy because we'll come back to it in a bit. And I wanna share the first line of the second chapter of the Yoga Sutras. For those of us who practice Judaism, you might be familiar with the Talmud, which is this collection of wisdom and understanding around Torah. So the Yoga Sutras are kind of the equivalent for the philosophy of yoga. It's a body of text and wisdom that helps to understand the practice of yoga. And the very first sutra says that the schematic practice of yoga consists of three components. The first is tapas. Tapas is heat or energy, and that's what's led you to log into the Zoom today and show up. It's your drive, it's your motivation. The second component is svadhyaya, self-study, the ability to turn your gaze in 
and to practice self-awareness. We're gonna come back to that in a moment. And the third component is humility. It's this understanding that the world is bigger than you. That we, each one of us, are just a part of that puzzle. So as we come into this next pose, I want to focus on the second component, svadhyaya, self-study. Really being aware of the movements of our body, where we're at, what our limitations are. So extend your arms out into a T position. Swing your left arm over to the right. Use your right arm to swing under and make a hook. And we're going to focus on the opening of our shoulder, the stretch of our shoulder. Inhale. And exhale. And as you continue that cycle of breath, practicing svadhyaya, practicing self-study, is your ability to recognize whether this stretch is one in which you want to go deeper, in which you're going to pull your left arm further over to the right, or is it one in which you need to back off? Is the slightest version of this stretch enough for you? It's finding that middle ground and being aware. Take another inhale. And as you exhale, arms come back out into a T position. Notice the sensation in that left shoulder. And now inhale, swing your right arm over to the left. Use your left arm to make a hook and hug your right arm closer into your chest. And inhale, lengthen up through your torso. And exhale, decide, do you want to deepen this stretch and pull your right arm further to the left? Or do you need to back off? What is your self-study telling you? Let's take another couple cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. One more inhale. And as you exhale, arms come back out into a T position and arms come down. So over the course of this practice, you need to be the master. You need to be the guide of your practice and make sure that you protect yourself so that you never cross over that threshold between a little bit of heat discomfort, challenge, discovery, that's one zone, and then the zone of pain. Never want to cross over into pain. And you do that through svadhyaya, through self-awareness. Switch the cross of your shins. And inhale, lengthen up through your torso. And then exhale, put your fingertips on the ground. Start to walk your fingertips forward. Lengthen your arms forward. Start to lower your torso towards the ground. For some of us, we're going to come maybe just a third of the way down. Keep your sit bones rooted towards the ground. Others are going to come halfway. And then there might be some in our virtual yoga studio that can release their forearms to the ground and lower their forehead towards the ground. Inhale and exhale. Continue that cycle of breath. And as we start to focus our mind towards this attribute of humility, Alan Morinus, the scholar of Musar, suggests that each one of us occupy a rightful space, neither too much nor too little. So already in our yoga practice, we can practice this idea of humility, of occupying literally the rightful space. Folding forward, neither too much so that you risk injury, nor too little so that you're not stretching and growing. What is that right middle spot?
Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, start to walk your hands back in towards your shins, lift your torso up, recross your shins. We're gonna do this hip opener one more time, fingertips on the floor. So using the information, the data that you're collecting through your self-study, and with the goal of occupying the right amount of space, neither too much nor too little, start to walk your fingertips forward again. And this is a stretch. So you don't want to do too little. You want to do just enough. So figure out where your end spot is. And then breathe. Do another couple cycles of breath together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Start to walk your hands back in towards your shins. And last time, switch the crossing of your shins. Place your hands on top of your knees, palms facing up towards the ceiling. Lengthening through all four sides of your torso, lifting the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. And let your eyes close. And as we settle into our practice, I wanna share the words of the remarkable woman, Helen Keller, who has this to say about humility. I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it is my chief duty to accomplish humble tasks as though they were great and noble. The world is moving along, not only by the mighty shoves of its heroes, but also by the aggregate of the tiny pushes of each honest worker. I think my understanding of that is that part of humility is taking an appropriate amount of pride in what it is that each one of us is capable of pushing forward into the world and valuing, recognizing that that contribution, whatever the size and scope is enormous, it can create ripples, ripples of change. And here we have this opportunity on our yoga mat to practice strengthening ourselves through the smallest of poses that exists just on this piece of rectangular cloth or fabric. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And honor the fact that you showed up today and that you're here for that spirit of self-discovery and of pushing out from yourself something into the world. And open up your eyes and swing your legs out in front of you. Now is a good time to have that strap handy. Sitting in Dandasana, staff pose, press your palms together, excuse me, press your palms into the floor by your hips, lengthen up through your torso. And then if you're practicing with the strap, wonderful. If not, don't worry, I'll offer a modification. 
You're gonna take the strap, you're gonna loop it over your feet, the balls of your feet, pull the strap towards you, lengthen up through your torso, and then as you exhale, you're gonna to start to bend your elbows out and lower your torso towards your thighs. And if you're not practicing with the strap, here's the purpose of the strap. It's a tool to make this pose accessible. So this early on into the practice, to reach forward and grab your feet, for many of us, that's too much of a stretch. So if you're not practicing with the strap, instead, just grab onto your ankles or your shins and trust that you're occupying the right amount of space. Even though you may not look like how the pose appears in yoga journal. Let's take another couple cycles of breath. And here the lesson of humility is accepting that sometimes you can't go the full distance. The full distance doesn't make sense for each one of us. Part of humility is honoring the self. Take another inhale and exhale. Either release the strap or release your hands. Bring your torso back up. And now bend your right knee, plant your right foot onto the ground inside your right thigh, your left thigh. Let your right knee descend open towards the right side of the room. Press your right foot into the inside of your left thigh. Either grab onto your strap so that we can use it again, or you know to grab onto your ankles or your shin. Reach the strap forward. Loop it over the ball of your left foot. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head and then exhale, start to bend your elbows open towards either side of the room. Rotate your torso so that as it comes down, it comes down over your left leg. And we'll be down here for a few cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And one more inhale. And exhale, start to release the strap, release your hands from your ankles or your shin, lift your torso up. Remove the strap and then lengthen your right leg out towards the front of the room. Second side, bend your left knee. Let your left knee fall open to the left side of the room. Press the sole of your left foot into the inner part of your right thigh. And rotate your torso so that it's uh, aligned with your right leg. And then either using the strap or using your hands on your ankles or your shin. First lift up through your torso, and then as you exhale, elbows splay out, and your torso comes down towards your thigh. Inhale, and exhale. So part of that equation of humility is recognizing limitations, recognizing those spots in our yoga practice, in our life, in our relationships, in our Jewish practice, where we still have room to grow, where we still have questions to ask, that's one end of that spectrum. Another couple cycles of breath. And then release your strap from your foot or release your hands from your foot, your ankles or your shin. 
You can put the strap off to the side. Lengthen your left leg out and then come into tabletop position. If you have sensitive knees, please pad your mat, either double it over or place a pillow underneath your knees. You're in tabletop position and then inhale, come into cow, shine your chest and heart forward, arch your back, lift your tush up towards the ceiling and exhale into cat, round your belly, draw your navel in towards your spine, inhale into cow, heart and chest shine forward, arch your back, exhale into cat, round your back, another couple of times, inhale to cow, and exhale to cat, so towards, towards the start of any yoga practice, it's good to loosen up your spine, to celebrate the natural curves in it. And then come back into a neutral position. Walk your hands a couple of inches forward. Spread your fingers. Index fingers point towards the top of the mat. We're about to come into downward facing dog. If you're new to yoga, or you know that you have sensitive hands, what you might want to do is practice on your blocks or books. And that's how I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to press my hand into the blocks. I'm going to tuck my toes, shift, come into downward facing dog. for a few cycles of breath, Ups. using an expression of humility, acknowledgement, you still have more to learn, or they do. Intelligent manner to make the right that your spark of holiness. You can paddle out your feet by bending one knee and releasing the opposite heel to the floor and then shifting. Come back to downward facing dog and then inhale, reach your torso forward into plank position. Press your heels towards the back of the room and then exhale, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank and exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. One more time, inhale into plank. And if you're new to yoga, bend your knees, lower them onto the floor. Everyone else, lower down through Chaturanga onto your belly. Put your blocks aside. And then everyone meets down on your stomach. Untuck your toes. Walk your hands a couple of inches back so that your hands are by your middle or upper ribs. Draw your elbows in towards your chest and then keep your feet planted on the ground. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Draw your shoulder blades together, spread your collarbones. Come into Bhujangasana, low cobra position and exhale, come down. We're gonna do that another couple of times opening up our chest. This is a back bend. Inhale, reach your heart and chest up. You're bending in your upper back and exhale, lower down. One more time, inhale, press your hands into the ground, lift your heart and chest up. Draw your shoulder blades together and then exhale, lower down. 
And now we're going to start to build on. So extend your arms in back of you, fingertips pointed towards the back of the room, palms on the ground. We're going to do this in a few stages. This is Shalambhasana, Lotus Pose. Inhale, press your feet into the ground, your palms into the ground, and lift your heart and chest up. And inhale, and exhale. One more inhale, and exhale, lower down. Take a moment of self-study. Occupy the right space, neither too much nor too little, and decide if you are ready to move on. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And if you're moving on and going for a more vigorous stretch, lift your feet up off the ground. So now your chest and heart are up, your feet are up, you're spinning your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Keep your gaze down towards the ground to protect your neck. This is a chest and heart opener and a back bend. It's not neck stretch. One more inhale and exhale lower down. We're going to build on more. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Lift your feet up. And if you're going for a deeper stretch, inhale, lift your arms up. Palms face in towards each other. Interlace your fingers and reach your knuckles towards the back of the room and see how that helps you to open up your chest even more. That one action really draws your shoulder blades together, spreads your collarbones. One more inhale and exhale, come down. Turn your cheek to one side. Inhale and exhale. Continue to breathe, taking a little bit of a rest. So I want to return to the spectrum of humility and accentuate that one end of that spectrum is the understanding of when to back off, when we still need to learn more, do more, heal, recover, not to push ourselves too much. That's one end of that spectrum. And the other end of the spectrum of humility is knowing when it is good to step up, to do more, to give more, to take a little bit of pride in what it is that we have to offer. So we're gonna continue on our bellies. Your arms are back and you're assessing when to go on. So if you have reached your limitation, you're gonna stick with one of the versions of the pose that we've already done. If you're taking on more, bend your knees, lift your shins up into the air, lift your arms up, palms face in, and stretch your arms back while you draw your ankles towards your tush, grab onto your outer ankles, and then inhale, lift your chest and heart up, Lift your knees up and come into Dhanurasana, bow pose. Again, keep your eyes towards the ground. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, release. Turn your cheek to the other side of the room. Just rotate your hips from right to left and left to right. And in a moment, we're going to do one more version of this back bend chest opener. And using all of this information, you are going to pick the version that's right for you. Coming back to that opening sutra that I shared, that our practice is broken down into motivation, self-study and awareness, and then humility to practice what is appropriate. 
So you might go for bow pose again. You might do Shalambhasana, locust pose, or you might decide to do low cobra, where your hands are pressing into the ground by your middle upper ribs with your fingertips forward. So pick the version that's right for you. Inhale, lift up. We're gonna hold it for a few cycles of breath and exhale. If your legs are straight out, reminder to spin the inner part of your thighs up towards the ceiling. One more inhale and exhale, lower down. Good job. Hands come back to your middle upper ribs, fingertips point forward, hug your elbows into your chest. Inhale, push your hands into the ground, lift your knees up, push your arms straight, come into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, which is upward facing dog. Draw your shoulder blades together, spread your collarbones, and then exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, turn your gaze forward between your palms. Start to walk your feet up towards your wrists until you find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Lengthen your arms and knuckles up towards the ceiling. Take the bend out of your elbows, release the crown of your head down towards the ground. So you're seeing a pattern here. We're already doing a number of poses that open up our chest. That's gonna serve us well later on in the practice. And now we're adding, adding in a stretch of the hamstrings. And to maximize the stretch in your hamstrings, start to shift the weight of your body towards the front of your feet. And notice the difference. Shift the weight of your body towards the back of your feet. Your hamstrings might feel less of a stretch and then shift them forward, shift the weight forward. One more inhale. Exhale, release your hands to your hips and start to come up one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down on the ground. And only when you're standing up straight in Tadasana do you lift up your chin and turn your gaze towards the front of the room. Release your hands by your hips, palms face out. You're standing in Tadasana in mountain pose. Step your feet together, big toes touching, heels an inch or two apart. And notice right away, if you're feeling shaky with your balance, step your feet hip width apart. It's a totally cool version of Tadasana. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Let's work a little bit more on our hamstrings through a few half sun salutations. Inhale, reach your arms up, arms frame your ears. Exhale, hinging at your hips, fold forward. Fingertips come down to the ground or they might rest on your ankles or on your shins. Inhale, come halfway up, flat your back. Exhale, fold forward, and then inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms come down. Again, inhale, arms up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. 
We're going to do it again, but we're going to add on a variation in Uttanasana in forward fold. So step your feet hip width apart. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Use your second and third finger to make a hook. Hook your big toe. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. And then as you exhale, bend your elbows out to either side of the room and bring your torso towards your thighs. You might need to put a bend in your knee. That's what I'm doing in order to really get your torso towards your thighs. Lift your tush up, crown of your head points down. Inhale and exhale. And then start to work your legs towards straight. Release your big toes, hands on your hips, straighten your legs. And then inhale, rise up and lift your arms up into the air. Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana, mountain pose. Great job. Step into the center of your mat. Step your feet about four or so feet apart. Reach your arms out into a T position. And you want your ankles underneath your wrists. So take a look, measure appropriately, bring your hands to your hips, inhale, lift your heart and chest up, and exhale, folding forward, prasarita, padottanasana, A. Reach your fingertips onto the ground. And here's another yoga example of occupying the right space, neither too much nor too little. If you can't get your fingertips on the ground, you're not occupying enough space. You need to widen your stance. That's gonna create more space on your mat for you to enter into this pose. And conversely, if it's too easy, if you're just hanging out down here thinking, uh, you know, I'm not really feeling much of a stretch, you need to occupy less space, narrow your stance. Walk your fingertips back so that they're aligned with your toes. Flatten your palms. And three cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Hands on your hips. Inhale, lift your torso up and exhale. Rotate your entire right leg out towards the right side of the room. Angle your back foot in 45 degrees. Line up the heel of your right foot with the arch of your left foot, your back foot. Stretch your arms out into a T position. Inhale, reach your right arm forward towards the front of the room. Reach your back hip back and then lower your front hand to your leg, your shin, your ankle, or this is a great time to use one of your blocks, press your hand into the block and open up your chest, lift your top arm up towards the ceiling and come into Uttita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. Inhale and exhale, root into your back foot and exhale, and then bend your top elbow, swing your top forearm down in back of you, hook your top hand inside of your bottom hip. So grab onto your inner thigh. This is gonna help you to open up your chest even more. One more inhale. 
and exhale, reach your top arm back up and then bring your torso up and let's come into Virabhadrasana 2, warrior two pose. Inhale, lift up through your torso, turn your gaze out over your front arm, that, that right arm. And as you exhale, bend into your right knee, lower your right thigh towards parallel. Your back foot is your anchor. So keep all four sides of your back foot rooted into the ground. And in this lesson of humility, be comfortable if you only have the slightest bend in your front knee. This might be where you're at today. This might be enormous for some of us. Others are bending deeper and deeper into that front knee. Again, bringing your front thigh towards parallel with the ground. One more inhale. Exhale, straighten your front leg hands on your hips, rotate your right foot in so that it's parallel with your left foot. And we're gonna do another version of Prasarita Padottanasana. Interlace your fingers behind your back, draw your knuckles towards the ground, open up your heart and chest. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up and exhale, folding forward. We're gonna be down here for several cycles of breath. Lift your knuckles up towards the ceiling. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, release your hands to your hips. Bring your torso up towards the ceiling. The crown of your head reaches up towards the ceiling. And let's do your second side with triangle pose and warrior two. Rotate your entire left leg out towards the left side of the room. Turn your back foot in 45 degrees. You might need to shorten your stance. Heel, front heel in alignment with the arch of your back foot. So take a look at your heel and your back foot, your arch. Arms out into a T position. Reach your right arm forward. Your hip goes towards the back of the room. And then again, you can use your block. Lower your right hand onto your ankle, your shin, or the block, or perhaps your hand reaches the floor. Open up your chest, top arm extends up towards the ceiling. Inhale and exhale. And now bend your top elbow and lower your top forearm down and around. Use your top hand to grab on to the inner part of your thigh, your front thigh. Open up your chest. Your gaze is up towards the ceiling. Inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. One more, inhale, exhale, your back arm extends up towards the ceiling and then lift your torso up, arms out into a T position, turn your gaze over your right arm towards the front of the room and then inhale, lengthen up through your torso, exhale, bend into your right knee, lower your right thigh towards parallel, excuse me, your left thigh towards parallel with the ground. Inhale. And exhale. Taking that opportunity for self-study to know when to back off, when to push forward. 
Don't be shy in either direction. Another couple cycles of breath. With each inhale, lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. And with each exhale, bend deeper into your front knee. Remember that your back foot is that anchor. So press into all four sides of your back foot and press your front big toe firmly down into the ground so that your front foot is an anchor too. One more inhale, exhale, straighten your front leg, hands on your hips and rotate your left foot so that it's parallel with your right foot. I'm gonna do one more wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, lift up through your torso. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Bring your torso down towards the ground. Take your second and third finger on each hand. Grab on to your big toes. So here again, occupy the right amount of space. Decide if you need to heel toe your foot in towards each other, your feet in towards each other so that you can grab on to your big toes. Few cycles of breath. And release your big toes, hands on your hips. Bring your torso up. and stand in Tadasana at the top of the mat. Stand up straight, take your blocks off to the side if you were using them, keep them towards the top of your mat. And take several cycles of breath. And I wanna to start to share a story from the Talmud that speaks towards the other end of the spectrum of humility. So one end of the spectrum is understanding our limits, keeping ourselves in check. There's a really interesting story in the Talmud that talks about Rabbi Zechariah ben Afkulas, who was presiding as a priest over the temple during the time of the revolt from this dude named Bar Kamsa. Bar Kamsa had it out for the Jewish people. And he goes to the leader of the Roman Empire and suggests that they send a sacrifice to the Jewish people. And Bar Kamsa says, watch, watch. These Jewish people will not accept the sacrifice. They are gonna reject it as a sign of disrespect to you. And secretly, Bar Kamsa causes a blemish, a very minor, almost undetectable blemish on the sacrificial animal knowing that the Jews would have no choice but to reject it because it would not be kosher to sacrifice an animal with a blemish. So the sacrifice goes off to the Jewish people. What Bar Kamsa did not figure out or figure on was that the Jewish people would spot the blemish and understand Bar Kamsa's intention. So they face this dilemma. Do we sacrifice an animal that is ultimately not kosher for sacrifice? and save our people? Or do we follow through and sacrifice this so that we can appease the Roman group? So hold on for the rest of the story. We're gonna flow through some sun salutation Bs. Standing in Tadasana, inhale, bend your knees, lower your tush towards the ground, reach your arms up, and then exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale, come halfway up, flat your back. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms, step your right leg back, step your left leg to meet it. Lower your knees onto the ground for a modification. Otherwise, shift your torso forward. Bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes into upward facing dog, and then exhale, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Lower your back heel towards the ground. Inhale, lift your torso up into warrior one pose. So in warrior one, your front knee is bent. Your thigh comes towards the ground. You're lifting your torso and arms up. Inhale, grow longer and exhale, lower your hands to the mat. Lift your back heel up. Step your right leg back into plank position and then either take the vinyasa or back into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, step your left foot forward, lower your right heel towards the mat. You're in heel to heel alignment. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up, bend into your left knee. Inhale to grow longer and exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot, right heel comes up, left leg back, you're in plank position, and then either take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. With your next inhale, turn your gaze between your palms, step your right foot forward, step your left leg to meet it, you're in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Standing in Tadasana, taking a few cycles of breath. So we're back at the story where the priest has this dilemma. Accept an unkosher sacrifice and the Jews will live because the Romans will be happy or stick to the laws of sacrifice, reject it, but then risk the lives of the Jewish people. And people within the community are saying to the priest, Rabbi Zafaria ben Akulas, accept the sacrifice. And the priest says, I, I can't make this decision. If I accept the sacrifice, then people will think that it's okay to sacrifice an unkosher animal. Well, the people say, okay, fine. Then let's just find Bar Kamsa, capture him and kill him. And that will just overthrow the plan. And the priest says, well, but we can't do that. I, I don't have the authority to do that because then we'd be sending the signal that if you try to sacrifice an unkosher animal, you're going to be put to death. And the priest just stood frozen, thinking I, it's not within me to overturn these decisions. And so they reject the sacrifice and that, as the story goes, is what leads to the destruction of the temple. Let's do another sun salutation B. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, lower your palms, step your left leg back, step your right leg to meet it, plank position. Take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward, lower your left heel to the ground, bending into your right knee. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. Exhale, lower your palms, frame your front foot, lift your back heel up, step your right leg back, plank position, take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward, lower your right heel to the ground, Inhale, come on up. Exhale, lower your palms to the ground, lift your right heel up, step your left leg back, vinyasa or downward facing dog. Once you're in downward facing dog, take three cycles of breath.
Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Step your right leg to meet it forward, fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. And you can choose to take Utkatasana, Utkatasana chair pose or just come right up into Utita Hastasana. Arms up, torso up. And then exhale, arms down. And so the significance of this story, this priest who exercised humility saying, these are the laws, it's not on me to change them. These laws were passed down to us through God. It's a lesson that too much humility, not occupying your space, this priest was given a position of responsibility to ultimately do right in the world to protect people, to use the wisdom of Judaism to enable life. By stepping back from his responsibility, the consequence of the feeling of inferiority was the death of the Jewish people, the destruction of the temple, I should say. So we have this lesson. So often people think of humility as shrinking and really turning the, the spotlight totally away from them. And that's not a great definition of humility. Humility is finding the center, finding the balance between arrogance and self-abasement. In the middle is where we find humility, stepping into our responsibility, recognizing what we can and should contribute to the world, taking some pride in our attributes, but keeping ourselves in check and always knowing our limitations. So we have come to our peak pose. We're gonna do one more prep pose for it. Step, stand with your feet together, hip width apart. Step your left leg back, angle your back foot in 45 degrees, hands on your hips, and rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Interlace your fingers behind your back. We're coming into a version of Parsvo Tonasana pyramid pose. And this happens to be the week where we start to read the book of Shemot, all of the life of Moses, starting with those darn pyramids. So the timing is right for pyramid pose. Inhale, reach your heart and chest up and exhale, fold forward, drape your torso over your right leg and float your knuckles up towards the ceiling. We've had so much practice with these actions. Draw your collarbones together, root into your front foot and notice, observe the stretch in your front hamstring. Inhale, and exhale and focus on rooting in your back foot and feel your back hamstring turn on. One more inhale and exhale, lift your torso up, release your fingers, hands on your hips, step your left foot forward, second side. Inhale, step your right leg back, angle your right foot 45 degrees towards the top of the mat, hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room, interlace your fingers behind your back, reach your heart and chest up, and then exhale, folding forward, knuckles float up towards the ceiling, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Take two more cycles at your pace. And then with your next inhale, lift your torso up. 
Release the interlace of your fingers, hands on your hips, step your right foot forward, Tadasana. So we have these two peak poses. Option number one is to stick with pyramid pose. You'll do that again. Option two is the peak pose of, drum roll please, some of you who are familiar with yoga may be anticipating this, humble warrior, a great expression of humility. I'm gonna demonstrate it once and then we'll do it together. I'm gonna to start with my feet to uh, hip width apart. I'm gonna step my right leg back and I'm gonna angle my right foot in 45 degrees. I'm gonna draw my hips towards the front of the room, rotate them so that they're centered. It's just like pyramid pose, but with one notable difference. I'm gonna interlace my fingers behind my neck, my, excuse me, my back. I'm gonna lift my heart and chest up. And this time I'm gonna to start to bend into my front knee. So here I am in a version of warrior one, but instead of lifting my arms up, I'm gonna to start to lower my torso down towards the ground inside of my front thigh and I'm gonna reach my knuckles up and lower the crown of my head down towards the ground. Rooting into my front foot, rooting into my back foot. And we're gonna be down here for a couple of cycles of breath and then we'll lift our torsos up, straighten our front leg, release the interlace of my hands and step my back foot forward. So that's humble warrior. So we're gonna start all together and here's where yoga comes together. What's that sequence that I outlined at the front of the practice at the top of the practice? Arriving with tapas, with motivation, that's one. Two is self-study and awareness. So knowing if you're ready to move on from pyramid pose into humble warrior, that's an intelligent decision that you need to make. And then three is this humility. And what I like about both pyramid pose and humble warrior is that we start by lifting our chest and heart up, taking pride, but knowing that there's something bigger by bowing forward so that we're part of something. So you pick the version of the pose that serves you well. Inhale, step your uh, right leg back. Rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Take some pride. Know that part of humility is that pride, that self-assurance. And then decide which version of the pose you're doing. If you're going for humble warrior, you start bending into your front knee. If you're doing pyramid pose, you keep that front leg straight and then everybody Lower your torso down towards the ground. If you're doing humble warrior, your torso comes inside your front thigh. Knuckles float up towards the ceiling. All the component parts that we've been working on, the chest opener, working on our hamstrings, they all come together in this pose. One more inhale. Exhale, rooting into your feet, rising up. Straighten your front leg. Release the interlace of your fingers, hands on your hips, and step your back foot forward. Second side, step your left leg back. Rotate your hips so that they're centered to the front of the room. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And then if you're in pyramid pose, you start to for fold forward. If you're going for humble warrior, bend into your front knee and then lower your torso towards the ground. Three cycles of breath, inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Another inhale, 
Exhale, lift your torso up. If your front knee is bent, straighten your right leg, hands on your hips, and step your back foot forward, Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold you forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, squat down, and then lower your tush onto the ground. Bring the soles of your feet together. Your legs are in a diamond shape. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, start to fold forward. Just a few cycles of breath as we start to cool down. Walk your hands back in. Bend your knees, plant your feet on the ground. Extend your arms out forward and start to lower your torso onto the ground. Hug your knees in. Shift your hips over to the right side of the mat and let your knees descend to the left. Extend your right arm out to the right. Come into this simple twist. Just another couple cycles of breath. Knees back up towards the ceiling. Shift your hips over to the left side of the mat. Lower your knees down towards the right. Extend your left arm out to the left. Twisting in the opposite direction. Knees up to the ceiling. And then extend your right leg out to the front of the room, left leg out to the front of the room. Let your ankles roll open, palms up towards the ceiling and release into Shavasana. Your final resting pose. Focus on your breath. Continue with your inhale and your exhale. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing some life into your body. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. Let your knees fall over to the right side of the room and come onto your right torso in a fetal position. Pause again. Press your palms into the ground to push yourself up into Sukhasana, a seated position, shins stacked one in front of the other, palms on top of your, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And in doing my own learning for this class, I came across a website called mysticmama.com. 
And the mystic mama says that we must be willing to be transformed by the information we receive in order to grow from it. For those of you who practiced with me last week, we talked about Hitlam Dut, about curiosity. And it comes from this Hebrew word that is self-reflexive, that's a reflexive verb. It's redundant, self-reflexive. And it means growth, learning for the sake of transformation. And that is a huge part of humility, recognizing that we all have space to grow and using that information to move forward. I wanna close with a beautiful idea in Judaism from Rabbi Simcha Bunin, who taught that every person should walk around with two pieces of paper, one in each pocket. And on one piece of paper, we write, for me, the world was created. And on the other piece of paper, we write, I am but dust and ashes. And in the moments where we might feel inferior or less than, down on ourselves, we take out the piece of paper that reminds us that for me, the world was created. I have meaning, I have purpose. And on days when we're feeling grandiose, when we're getting carried away, we look at that other piece of paper and remind ourselves that we are just one puzzle piece among so many. And yes, some of us might be in positions to make a wider impact and more immediate impact in the world. And other of us make that impact in a different way, but each one of us brings value to the world. And that is part of humility, that balance. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And I want to leave us with two questions. Question number one, ask yourself, do I leave enough space in my life for others? And question number two, is there space I ought rightfully to occupy that I need to stretch into? So again, do I leave enough space for others? And do I stretch into the space that I ought to occupy? Inhale. Exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Shabbat Shalom, Namaste. May we all be blessed as we walk this path in 2021, elevating this idea of human decency. Thank you so much for joining.